So, let's get started with the presentation. This is an overview of what I'm going to present in this session. At the end of this session, you will learn about the structure of population models and the interpretation of their parameters, deterministic and stochastic logistic model, sources and type of stochasticity. The term population dynamics refers to how different species populations change over time. For example, this figure shows two processes that change the state of this bird population. Birth and immigration means there is an increase in the population size. In the other hand, death and immigration means there is a decrease in the population size. To track these changes, we use population models. By applying mathematical tools, population models are used to study the dynamic of any population, whether it is growing or shrinking. A mathematical model is an expression used to describe mathematical concept-based systems, and they are widely used in natural sciences, dynamical systems, statistical models, and differential equations are some forms of mathematical models that can be used. There are two types of population models, deterministic models and stochastic models. These models could be described in a discrete or continuous form. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the discrete population models. Let's start with the discrete deterministic model. Discrete means that change happen at specific time intervals. As we can see here, the calculation began at time zero, then at time one, and so on. And the model is defined as deterministic when we can completely calculate the population size at any time. And we can see that the population doubles every time interval in this scenario. So, for example, you can go ahead and calculate the population size at time 3. Equation 1 shows the form of the deterministic models, where nt is a population size at time t, and r is the per capita growth rate which is the rate at which the population size changes per individual in the population. The change in the population size is mainly defined by the current population size and the growth rate of that population. And the growth rate is determined by the birth, death, immigration and migration rates within the population. When the per capita growth rate remains constant, the population experience exponential growth. Introducing some elements of randomness or noise in the model would change the state of that model to be stochastic. Stochasticity is the noise that interacts with the population dynamics. The scale and type of noise is determined by the population density, the environment, and the ecological behavior of each individual in the population within that particular ecosystem. In early study stages, to determine change in the population size, we use deterministic models, which they predict the population size precisely at any given time using the initial inputs. The actual environment is varying randomly. And this variation affects the ecological communities in different ways. And each species in the community have their own response to that change. In some cases, it might cause an extinction of some species in the community. To get a realistic model, we tend to use stochastic models. When we simulate stochastic models, the results are going to be different every time we run the model. And equation 2 here shows the form of the stochastic models, where nt is a population size at time t, lambda t is a population growth rate at time t, and et 
represents the environmental scarcity or noise. But let me slow down a little bit here and talk about the sources of stochasticity first. There are two sources of stochasticity that we usually consider when we model the population dynamics, demographic stochasticity and environmental stochasticity. Demographic noise used to capture the differences or the variation between individuals within the population since each individual has a different level of fitness. Fitness here refers to the individual reproductive success. And the environmental noise term used to characterize the physical and the biological changes in the environment around any species. Stochasticity implies unpredictability or the inability to predict the future state precisely. But we can describe it in a probability distribution form. In the next slide, I am going to show you how we evaluate or we estimate the population growth rate in the stochastic models, considering the demographic noise. If we assume that each individual fitness in the population is given by Fi, where i is representing the individual i, then the population growth rate lambda t would be the average of all individual fitnesses at time t. Now, let's see how we represent the environmental stochasticity in the model. For many years, the environmental noise has been modeled using a wide spectrum that influences the population dynamics. There are, however, numerous studies suggesting that most environmental noise in practice not white, but instead is usually correlated noise. In other words, the environmental conditions for next year is more likely to be same as the previous year. The assumption of a wide spectrum is generally thought to be an unrealistic choice for representing the noise in many population studies. So, in order to present more realistic models, we moved beyond the scope of the wide spectrum. The figure to the left illustrating a time series of white, pink and red noise. And we can see the relationship between each point and the next in the time series. And the figure to the right is showing the power spectral density of the three time series. The power spectral density describes the distribution of power into frequency components. We classify a time series as white when there is no dominant frequency, a uniform power spectral density. And the pink and red time series are dominated by the lower frequencies. To generate the environmental noise, we use one of these noises time series. A quick recap here. We first talked about the population models and how they use to track population dynamics. Then we defined the deterministic and the stochastic models. And lastly, we talked about what type of noise we consider when we model any population. Now, Let's have a look at a model example, the logistic model. The logistic equation was first developed by Vahalis between 1838 and 1847. The main idea behind the logistic model is that the population growth rate is proportional to both the existing population and the amount of available resources. In this equation, nt is always going to represent the population size at time t, and r is a growth rate, and the growth rate determines how fast the population is going to change. And k is a carrying capacity, which is the upper limit of population growth. In other words, carrying capacity is the maximum population that the environment could sustain. And this is a deterministic representation of the logistic model. 
and here is a simulation of deterministic logistic model and we can see this sigmoid shape at the beginning the population grows very fast and quickly settles at the carrying capacity level this is a code that used to generate the discrete logistic model simulation the inputs in the function are the initial conditions and the output is a population size at each time step. The time interval has to be specified in the initial inputs. And these are the code lines used for plotting the logistic equation dynamic. Coming next is the stochastic logistic equation. And here is the representation of the stochastic logistic model. And we can see the difference between the deterministic and the stochastic model. The growth rate lambda is calculated at every single time step. And we also taking into account the consideration of the environmental noise. The tricky part is where to add this noise in the model. In this particular equation, we added the noise to the model itself after we calculating the population size at time t. Some ecologists argue that since the carrying capacity is an environmental limitation, the environmental noise should be added to the carrying capacity. In the other hand, some ecological scientists add the environmental noise to the population growth rate lambda. But then it comes the questions of what noise color we use, correlated noise or white. How strong or weak is that correlation? And if you are using white noise, what variance va value you would use to model your system? Let's see some simulations of the stochastic logistic model. In this simulation, the environmental noise is represented by a white noise or is drawn from a white distribution noise. And we can see that every time step, the model output is slightly different. But there is some kind of a range where you would expect your next trajectory would lie around. And the figure to the left is the logistic stochastic model considering the environmental and the demographic noise. To generate the demographic noise, we used negative binomial distribution. And we can see that the demographic noise is generating some extreme event where in part of these simulations, the population died out or some of the trajectories are vanished. Note that the demographic noise here is used to generate the growth rate lambda t. These type of model simulations are used to graph or picture a probability distribution, which should make it useful to interpret or to see a direction where the population dynamics might go. And here is a code that used to generate these trajectories. The inputs of this function are the initial conditions for the model, and the output is a population size at each time spe step that is being specified at the beginning in the initial conditions. The difference between this code and the deterministic model code is in the growth rate and the environmental noise. The growth rate here is generated using a negative binomial distribution. In the case of the environmental noise, we use the wide spectrum data series. And this code to illustrate the trajectories with a certain amount of simulation numbers. Models are useful for addressing and directing the study of interaction within and between population and the environments. 
and they are widely used in decision making and planning around the management of ecological resources. Modeling interactions makes it possible to identify patterns and trends in the population dynamics. For example, stochastic models used in the study of endangered species. And it is also used in the agricultural planning and common example for that is determining what conditions allow for maximum harvest with avoiding biological invasions from unwanted species. And here are a few concepts for which you could do some research about and get a better idea of the stochastic model's applications. In conclusion, deterministic models are all about their initial conditions. And adding variation or randomness to the model drives you away from the certainty of the deterministic models. Here are some articles that I've used to do this presentation. And thank you everyone for being here today.